Hey everybody and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 62. In this tutorial we are going to continue taking a look at the stencil buffer and some other things we can do with it. In our last tutorial we had set up this sprite that's being drawn and it is being used as a mask for our stencil buffer. However, most of the time when we actually do masking, we won't want to be drawing the sprite or whatever we are masking with. So how can we get by drawing the sprite? Well, we could have a pixel shader that just, you know, renders like a transparent pixel and it just blends in with whatever was there before. However, there's actually an even simpler approach. What we can do is we can just use a null pixel shader. By using a null pixel shader, we will never update any of the pixels However, the stencil buffer and depth buffer can still be updated here. So we will set null pointer for the pixel shader before we draw our mask. And now when we test this, we should just see um, the effect of the mask and not actually see uh, the sprite in the background. So now let's take a look at um, another use of a mask. And inside of our code, we have this sprite patch and we are using it to draw that text and the text just displays our FPS. Well, what I'd like to do is have like a, a highlight effect go through the text. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to draw the text twice and we're going to mask over one of them. So let's say the original color is white. So that's the first one. And for the second one, uh, let's say that we want it to have red be highlighted over it. So if we currently go to test this, what we will see is we will just see the red text because it's being drawn over the white text. So what we need to do is apply a mask that goes over the red text. Let's go up here and we're going to remove the mask from our object that we had before. So for the depth stencil state, we will just use the default depth stencil state, and it just ignores the mask and all that. All right, we are going to take the code where we were drawing our sprite mask. We are going to cut it and move that just before we draw the red text. So we're drawing our white text, we're drawing the sprite mask, and then we're drawing the red text. Now, we want this sprite patch when we draw the red text to take into account, uh, it needs to be using the depth stencil state for applying mask. So what we can do for that is when we begin the sprite batch, we can actually specify, if you see the arguments, um, a lot of different options. And if you do null pointer, it'll just ignore, you know, whatever you put in there. So for the sort mode, we'll use the default sort mode, which is sprite sort mode deferred. For the blend state, we're not doing a different one there. Same sam uh, sampler state. So for the depth stencil state, we want to use the apply mask and everything else we would just leave how it is. So now when we test this, we should only see the red text where the mask is. So if we debug now, we shouldn't see any red text because our, our mask sprite is being drawn in the center of the screen. So you see, we don't see any red text. However, if we move our sprite, let's say that we first wanna move it to the top left so let's go down to where we initialize it and we can do set position to zero, zero. And we're also going to set the scale. Let's say we just want it to be like 24 by 24 pixels. And let's go ahead and test this again. And we should see some of those uh, letters you see, now we have partially red, and the rest is white. Well, one uh, neat little effect we could do is if we go to our engine CPP, 
we could have the mask move from left to right over the text and then come back to the beginning. So we could do something like, say, sprite, adjust position. We will move it by, um, let's say, 0 0.01. And then if the position gets too far to the right, I'm not sure how far that text goes out, but we'll just say if it gets over 160, then we will reset the sprite's position back to the origin. So let's see what this looks like. All right, so you see it is moving over and highlighting. It's actually going a lot slower than I had expected, but, and then once it gets past it, I guess it's going a little bit too far. And then it should reset. All right, and then it reset back to the beginning. So let's make that go a little bit faster. All right, so now you see it's highlighting it. Looks kind of neat. Um, so that's an, another example of what you could do with a stencil buffer. Now, I don't want this tutorial to be too long, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this one here. But in the next tutorial, we're going to look at how to do um, a stencil for something that's not just a quad. So let's say that you wanted to have a stencil mass that's a circle. Well, with what we currently know, the only way that we could do that is if we made a, you know, a vertex buffer that has a bunch of tries to make up a circle. And that wouldn't, that probably wouldn't be the best way to do it. There's a lot simpler ways you can do it. So that is what we are going to cover in the next tutorial.